Hi everyone, this is Hussein again from Effectsco. I'd like to bring another interesting tutorial today. Today I'll be showing something in Adobe After Effects. Lately I've been looking at people doing webinars and live streaming and I noticed that they have a countdown or before they start their streaming. It's a good idea to have this because it will allow your audience to anticipate and wait for your streaming or your live uh, streaming to start. So today I want to show you how you can do something like this uh, quickly in After Effects so your live streaming will look uh, nicer while waiting for your webinar. Let's get started. Here we are in Adobe After Effects and we will start off by making a new composition and I'm going to call this loop. For width, I'm going to put it at 1920 by 1080. We'll stick to 30 frames per second and we'll make 5 second composition. Press OK. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new shape layer. And I'm going to rename my shape layer. I'm going to call it orange. I'm going to open up the property for the orange layer. Let's go to the add button here and let's insert an ellipse. I'm going to open up the ellipse path and we have an option for changing the size and the position. Before we do that, I'm going to click again on the Add button and then this time I'm going to put in Stroke. I'll open up the Stroke properties and let's go down to the Stroke Width and change it to something about 20 pixels. And then we're going to go up to the size and we're going to increase that. Let's give it about 800 pixels. For the color, I'm going to change it to an orange. So that's it. So that's the uh, ring that we are going to create. But for this one, the first one, I'm not going to do an orange color. I'm going to do something white. I'll show you why in a bit. And I'm going to bring down the opacity for this layer by clicking on T on your keyboard or opacity and bringing something about 20%. It's going to be like our background for the, the loop to happen later. I think I should rename this to BG or background. And I'm going to duplicate that. For BG number two, I'm going to change it to orange and I'm going to open up the properties for it. Go to its content under stroke and change this to orange. The opacity will have to go back up to 100. So this is the one that we are going to animate. So let's open up its content again. And we have a stroke. So we add another property under the add button. Let's give it uh, a trim path. And we'll open up the trim path and we'll start making keyframes. So I'm going to start making keyframes for every one second. So I'm going to hit my timer here. I'm going to put there 100 for one second. And I'm going to put in a form marker by hitting shift one. And I'm going to go to 200. I'm going to put shift two, second marker. Then we go to 300 and uh, shift 3 for uh, marker number 3. And then finally 400 and shift 4. So those are all our markers. So we can go back to the beginning of the com and we're going to create keyframe for the start of the trim path. And we, it's, it's at 0. So I'm going to jump to marker number 1 and I'm going to change this to 100%. And you can see that we have an animation going on. Okay, then I'm going to go to uh, marker number one and I'm going to create a keyframe for the end property and I'm going to make that into zero. And I'm going to jump to marker number two by hitting two on my keyboard and changing that to 100. And now you can see I have an animation that starts and then it closes down back again at two seconds. If you notice that we have a square end here, we're going to change that to a, a round end by going down to the stroke property and changing it from butt cap to round cap. All right, so I'm going to duplicate this now because I'm going to make two of this and I'm, I'm going to call the other one white. So command D to duplicate and let's uh, rename that to white and I'm going to bring it down under the orange. For the uh, orange loop, I'm going to trim it down at two seconds. So I'm going to select the orange layer and I'm going to hold down my Option or Alt key and click on the right bracket to trim it down. And for the white, same Option and right bracket key. And I'm going to drag that to so it starts at the two second point. 
So you will see now we have a loop. But before that, let's change the color for the white under stroke. Let's change it to white instead. So let's look at that. Let's click on spacebar. So that's orange. And then we have the white. Awesome. So I'm going to trim the comb at 4 seconds. And I'm going to hit my end key on my keyboard. And then I'm going to click the gray area here. And I'm going to say trim comb to work area. So now we have a 4 second loop. Let's try that again. Loop number 1. And then loop number 2. And it will just loop by itself. So it will be a nice thing to put a glow where the uh, orange and white lines will be coming up. The stroke, right, will be a glow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-comb these two first layers. I'm going to go to layer and say pre-compose. And I'm going to call these strokes. And I'm going to throw a glow effect onto it. I've got a glow effect here. Click and drag onto stroke. We might want to change this to maybe a glow radius of, I would say probably put it at 50. And we have a nice glow radius going on. So let's try that again. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the size, like a pulse. What we're going to do now is we're going to uh, pre-compose this whole thing again. Uh, layer, pre-compose, and I'm going to call this master. Uh, in this master layer, I'm going to open up the scale properties. So what we're going to do here, after putting the scale properties, we are going to start creating keyframes. So I'm going to click on the scale property keyframe. And at the beginning of the comb, I'm going to leave it at 100%. And at marker number 1, I'm going to make this to 90%. At marker number 2 is going to go back to 100%. And marker number 3 is at 90%. And marker number 4, 100%. It's so much easier if you make markers, so you can jump straight over to the markers just by hitting on the numbers on your keyboard. It's so much easier. So let's have a look at that. So it's going to grow and then it's going to start pulsing. You want to make this as a transparent property that you, you want it to look through um, you can make it like an overlay for your video. Maybe you want to show another video at the back there. But maybe you want to make it like a semi-transparent. It'll be nice to have that. So let's create a new solid. Let's call this background. And let's make it black. And let's bring it down under the master channel. And let's change its transparency to about maybe 20%. You will be able to look through to the video behind. So now we have a completed a looping stroke going on. It will be also nice to put some easy ease on the keyframes. So I'm going to open up my master comp and I'm going to double click on the strokes comp again. In order for you to see the keyframes, you can select all of them and then press U on your keyboard. And I'm going to select every keyframe here by just making a selection like that. I'm going to right click on the keyframe and say keyframe assistant easy ease. I believe I will loop it has a keyframe as well. So I'm going to select the master and press U on my keyboard. And if I click on the scale word itself, all the keyframes will be selected. So select the scale and then I'm going to right click on any of the keyframes and say keyframe assistant easy ease. We'll probably have a better animation now by just putting in this easy ease. If this will be a good animation to put in a software, something like an Ecamm Live or any software that you can uh, overlay with your timer. But if not, I can show you how you can put a timer in between uh, this video here. So I'm going to create a text for this animation. So let's go ahead and grab our text tool and just click him in, in the middle here. And let's just let's just put some dummy text. So I'm going to I'm going to put a zero zero colon zero zero, and I'm going to change the scale of that timer. Press Enter to accept that. Let's change the scale and let's try and make it a bit slightly bigger. So I'm going to align my text. I found a cool expression while looking at the internet that you can put to make this to count down from 5 minutes and below. So in order for you to do that, you just open up your text properties. Under text, under the source text, you might want to click on your option and click on the source text. And I've copied uh, the expression in my memory and I'm just going to paste it here, Command V. And if I just click away now, you can see that I have a timer that's going on. I might want to put that in the center. I can use my arrow keys to move it into place. So if I were to put it as a loop now, you can see that it's going to play down from 5 minutes and below. Um, this is not a good idea though because uh, you might want to have a 5 minute video for you to just count down. So it will be best if you have an overlay from your software like Ecamm Live or any other software that you can put a timer that counts down to the video. To finish up this tutorial, I would like to make a frame 
around our comp to make it look a bit more nicer. So I'm going to create a new solid and I'm going to use the same orange or almost the same orange as we have earlier. And I'm going to press OK. We'll select the orange solid. Let's go ahead and grab the ellipse tool by enabling my guides here. I can see the middle of the comp and I'm going to put my mouse there in the middle and we just drag outwards. I'm going to press my command and shift key and drag it outward. What I'll do is I'll reverse this by doing a mask and I'll say use a subtract and I will get a frame outside of the comp. So if I were to zoom out a bit, you can see that that's how it looks like. I'm going to switch off my grid and guide options and there you go. You have a frame there. So if I were to play that, you can see that now it's all in a frame. To render this comp, let's have a look again at our transparency for the background. So I'm going to select my BG here and we'll just click this toggle transparency grid button here. You can see that's actually transparent. So perhaps our opacity will, is not enough. So I'm going to bring the opacity up to maybe about 50%. So you can see some video through that later on. To render this, let's go up to composition, add to render queue. In this setup here, we can see we leave the best settings alone. Click on lossless and let's change it to QuickTime. If you have a QuickTime, select QuickTime and under format options, if you want to maintain the transparency, you will have to change to something like Apple ProRes 4444. Okay, and click OK. And then click OK again. Under the output, you can put a name. Let's say you want to change it to looper.mov. Right, let's put it in our desktop for now. Click Save. And uh, replace there, because I've done one uh, earlier. And you just have to click the render button. So it only takes a few seconds because it's only a four second loop. And there you go. Right, so let me import that back again into After Effects and let's have a look at that. That's how we do the looping and that's how we save uh, with the transparency background. And that's it, that's the tutorial for today. If you liked it, please uh, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell. We hope to see you again in the next tutorial. Take care, bye bye.